morning, Good morning, Good morning, Sarah. I'm Sarah Posner. I'm here today with EJ Graff of the American Prospect, and we are going to be talking about the marriage equality referenda that are on the ballot in three states, uh, Maryland, Washington, and Maine. Uh, we're not going to be talking about Minnesota, which has an amendment to ban same-sex marriage uh, on the ballot this year. We're, we're only going to talk about the three states where there's an affirmative um, yes, uh, yes, we're for marriage equality uh, question on the ballot. So, uh, and this obviously, if it's passed in any of these states, it would be a first and it would be historic for uh, and it's uh, marriage too. equality. Right. Okay. And so you're predicting that it's going to in May. It's going to win in May. Or you're not predicting. You don't like predicting. No. It's going to win in May. Okay. It's nope. going to win in May. You're going to predict that. Okay. So we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but I know that last week there was a poll that came out in the Washington Post. And I wanted to talk to you about your skepticism about polling on this question, on this issue. Uh, because the Washington Post poll found 52% of likely voters in Maryland mm -hmm. were going or were in favor of question six, which is the marriage equality question on the Maryland right. ballot. And Which says, let, you, uh, are you in favor of uh, allowing same-sex couples to marry? Is civil marriage Are not, you in favor of this law that passed in the legislature yep. uh, that allows same-sex couples to get married and has these very robust religious freedom protections in it, which I think is an important element True. of this. But in any case. But uh, Maine had that so, in 2009 and voters still shut that law down. Right. Forever. But I think it's important to point out that it's there, yep. uh, contrary to the... Uh, the fretting uh, from the anti-equality side that there aren't sufficient religious freedom protections. So in any case, so 52% for you, to, in your mind, that number That's 48 um, at the polls. is not predictive no. of that, that, that number holding on a lot. All right. I, now, let, let me explain why. And, and also say that this history might not apply. But here's the history. Since 1996, uh, whether same-sex couples should be able to marry has been on the ballot in 32 different initiatives, right? Voters have voted on it 32 different times, sometimes twice in one state, as in California, but every time we've lost. And while there are reasons that Maryland, Maine, and Washington are all different from um, those, uh, those votes in the past, there are some things we have learned from the, about the polling, those of us who've been watching since 1986. So one is um, that and undecideds all break against us, all of them, every time. All right. So if if the poll says 42 percent in favor, 52 percent in favor, 42 uh, percent against, that's really 52 to 48. Second. Because those undecideds haven't thought about it. And if you haven't thought about it, you vote for the status quo. That, that's how that works. It's not that they're lying. They just they, they haven't been paying attention to that issue. It's not important enough. No one's come to talk to them. Or, but the status quo is the law passed the legislature. No, the status quo is um, I'm stressed, heterosexual I'm people can marry each other. Same-sex couples cannot. That's the status quo. Right. Right. Um, the uh, second... Two to five percent of our support falls away at the polls. I think it could be turnout. You know, different people go to the polls than have were polled. Uh, it could be um, people lose their nerve, right? I kind of wanted to let my cousin Mary marry her girlfriend Angela, but now that I'm here, I don't know. I'm not ready to make any changes. They vote against. So that's what we have seen to date. All three of so these measures are poll. different. All right, let me let me explain how they're different. Okay. In that all of those votes, all thirty-two of those votes, have been on the sentence, "Marriage in blah 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 state is between one man and one woman." Mm -hmm. And this time, it's an affirmative question. Mm -hmm. Do you want to allow? And the phrasing is slightly different in each state, but it's essentially, um, "Would you? Do you want to allow uh, same-sex couples in your state?" to have civil marriage licenses. Civil is, all, is always in there. And it's a, are you in favor of happiness question, 
right? So that may change some of the polling. That's why I don't want to predict Maryland. But I still have that skepticism. Um, like, well, let me ask you this about the poll. Yeah. And, and there have been other polls in Maryland. Baltimore Sun did a yeah. poll, and I think there was another poll somewhere else, um, which, again, was showing the, a majority in favor of question six. Mm -hmm. The Washington Post poll that was just last week was 52% for yeah. and 43 against. Right. So that adds up to 95. So that's 5% um, with no opinion or undecided or whatever right. the whatever the 5% is. And so you're saying that historically that 5%, that 5% that doesn't fall in the yes or no, right. breaks for no. Correct. So if that happened, that would get the no up, according to that poll, to 48, and it would still be 52 to 48. Right, but we lose 2 to 4%, right? right, of the people who say they're going to vote in favor of, well, see, that's, the, that's what's different. Like, in the past, right. it hasn't been a vote in favor of. It's been a vote in favor of um, marriages between one man and one woman. So all the people who've mm -hmm. said, of the people who in the past who have said they would vote against that sentence, two to five percent of them have in fact voted in favor of that sentence, right? So they, it may be 52 percent in the advance polling, but then it becomes, for, so let me, let me give you an example. In 2009, Maine's, le, Maine's legislature passed the same law, essentially, that Maryland's legislature passed. It was signed by the governor. Um, they had the six-month campaign, you know, just as you are in Maryland or whatever, eight months. And about a month before uh, they went to the ballot, 53% of Maine Voter, likely voters polled said they would vote to uphold that law and 47 no less than 47 said they would vote against but in fact um, only 47 percent voted to uphold the law it went down it was 53 percent to knock down that law and maintain um, one man one woman as marriage it was it remained the same percentage that it was six months before. The polling that the main forces had, main equality forces had, was that 47% were on our side, were on the equality side um, when the question was put on the ballot. And that's exactly the number that they ended up with at the end, right? The, Even though over the course of the correct. campaign, that number spiked a little right. bit, according to right. polling. Okay. So what so, so, the, so the good news for you is that speaking, but also Maryland okay. knows this, right? The Maryland Equality Forces know this. They're working with the same people um, who've been working on the issue over the past 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. They know what the polling means. They, they know it's very dicey. They know it's turnout, 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 turnout. So they're, they're working, they're, they're working, you know, they're, they're aware of it. And... And this is what I think is more likely to happen than you winning in this election. And if you lose, they are not, they're not going to stop the campaign. They're going to keep working the day after for the next couple of years until they get the polling up in advance of the campaign. And then they're going to pop the question again. And that's why I'm happy about Maine. That's what Maine did. Right? Okay. So you're saying that because my the question in my mind is well what happened between 2009 and 2012 in Maine that makes you optimistic that there's going to be a different outcome this time on door to door people only change their minds on um, something like marriage if they have really talked it through with somebody about why this is so personal why, why this matters? Who cares? Most people are not like you and me, Sarah. They're not political junkies. They're not thinking about political issues affecting other people day in and day out. We're, we're pretty rare, right? And everyone watching this video is pretty rare. We're, we're really the unusual junkie. Most people are getting their kids to soccer and trying to get dinner on the table and racing to and from work or going to the unemployment line, whatever it is they're doing, they're, they're busy with their own lives. And some of these questions they only look at, I mean, some of them I only look at before they go 
to the ballot. They don't do any other education. They're like, yes, no, no why, why would I bother with that? It doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm not ready to make any changes in the world right now today. I, you know, I have to go get the groceries. So what the main campaign did, they did not stop. The very next day after they lost, they kept doing their door-to-door, -door, their voter discussions, their education campaigns in the um, local Rotary clubs or Unitarian churches or whatever they were. And they moved the needle. They did not go back to the... They decided not to go back to the... They, 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 they did it on their own timeline. This is how they put it. Last winter, they sat down with their coalition partners, their national strategists, and said, okay, here's our internal poll now. We, have we are starting with 55% of Maine voters, likely voters, saying they are on our side. We all and that was a result of a basically three-year campaign correct. to change people's Door-to-door -door campaign. <clears throat> they talked to, they told me, um, 70, they had 70,000 conversations. I think that was the number. Um, and they only lost by 30,000 votes. I mean, 53% sounds large, but it Maine is not that enormous a state, and it was an off-year right, election, right. you know, all of that. So um, they, they had kept up the, the education campaign, and the opponents of marriage equality went home. Right? This is our lot. These are our lives. Right? People feel very personal about the ability to get married for themselves, or sometimes for their siblings, or cousins, or aunts, but... These are our lives. I mean, a lot of people are willing to have, whatever, hundreds of conversations with other people about why we're human beings who love and want to get married. Whereas the um, National Organization for Marriage or the um, Roman Catholic Church have other things to think about. I mean, it, the National Re the National Organization for Marriage has other things to think. They have other about. states to think about. To me, right? that that's all they think yeah, about. But they have, right? but they don't have Maine to think about all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas Maine people do. The people who live in Maine went ahead and went door to door and talked to people and kept lists. It's a mass education campaign. That's what it is. They also have the most spectacular ads during that time. They came up with um, local families. It's just heartwarming, really. These, you know. And these are ads that they put on local television. They're, yeah, their their TV ads are spectacular. They're these multi generational Maine families with deep Maine accents that I can't do because my wife is from Maine, <laughs> and if I tried to do it, she would make fun of me all night. Um, I can't do a Maine accent, but you, you, it's really worth going to their website and taking a look because they're so moving. Some of them saying, you know, oh God, I'm going to try and do it. I'm going to send her tickets, but some octogenarian saying. You know, we really believe in family, and I really want my granddaughter, Sarah, to be able to get married. You know, mm -hmm, her mm -hmm. partner, Jenny, is just part of the family, and I really want that to be official. And Now, here's a question about Maine. <clears throat> so, to what extent during this three years... Let, let, let me just sum up. I know I'm going off and off, but yeah. they started with 55%. They're going to end with 55%, maybe 54 but they're going to win. So when you say they started with 55%, you say they started with 55%. They didn't put the question on the ballot until they had enough in their polling to uh, to win even if 2-3% peeled off. Got it. Now let me ask you about the education campaign that they were yep. running for the three years intervening between 2009 and 2012. Yep. To what extent did it try to focus on or respond to religious arguments made by opponents of marriage equality? You would have to talk to them about that, but I think primarily, you know, they tried to have conversations as door-to-door -door and other, as all of these things do. They, they tried to have conversations that were, um, that responded to any objection anybody personally had, right? But mostly they talked about personal stories. You know, I'm mm -hmm. in love, right? I want to marry her. Or um, my brother is a good person and I want him to be able to get married just like I can get married. You know, th those, those, just making it clear that it's about relationships and um, saying, yes, sometimes we do raise children and you know, if marriage is good for children, it'll be good for those children too. And, 
you know, if the church, if someone's objection was the church, they'll say, well, the church doesn't have to marry us. I mean, the church doesn't recognize divorce, and Maine does. So th those can all be addressed, but it's the it's the human relationship thing that really makes the difference. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go back to Marilyn for a second. Okay. So Marilyn hasn't had a three-year campaign. They're pretty much in the same timing-wise, in the same place that Maine was in 2009. Right. Is that what yes. you're saying? Okay, but at the same time, just to play devil's advocate yep. here, uh, those intervening three years have seen huge changes Absolutely. in public opinion yes. on marriage equality. Absolutely. Uh, so maybe it's not a mirror image in terms of... Um, you know, a mirror image of Maine in terms of... That. Well, that's why I, so, I don't want to make a prediction. I, I'm skeptical, right. but I, okay. I'm not ruling it out. I mean, you absolutely could win. I mean, yes, oh, it's been three more years, and yes, they have Washington, D.C. right there, and uh, if same-sex couples go to D.C. and get married, um, they can come back to Maryland and be married. Maryland recognizes out-of-state same-sex marriages. So... And President Obama's announcement that he now is in favor of same-sex marriage because uh, his daughters have friends whose parents are same-sex couples, and it just didn't seem fair. I mean, the way he talked about it, his personal evolution exactly modeled the way people make those changes in their hearts. Um, and that flipped African-American opinion overnight. And as you know, um, mm -hmm. Maryland has one of the largest... Uh, percentages of African American voters in the uh, of all the states, That's thirty percent. Right. So, and it's affirmative, and this state has been talking about it for several years. Have you got some kind of domestic partnership law there? I'm not sure. Um, I don't. You know what? I don't know. I, I don't know. That um, helps. That that campaign tends to help. I mean, that's what well, they've got I, in Washington. I, I, when when we go to when you're willing to let go of Maryland, we'll go to Washington. In a we'll talk about that. <laughs> so, but but in Maryland, something that I mean, maybe I just pay attention mm -hmm. to this aspect of it more because I write about religion. Yep. But it seems to me that they've made a huge yep. push. The the equality proponents yep. have made a huge push. Based on religion. absolutely, so you have a Catholic governor, and so so let's just say you know it's a predominantly Democratic yep. state. It's voted for the Democratic candidate for president, and that will help. This is a presidential yeah. election, and Obama voters when, are right? going to be up. Yes, and they have done this it's spectacular a, it's, campaign it's in the African American churches. But they're also, doing a great job. Also, okay, so 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 you know we have a, a Catholic Democrat who's our governor, uh, Martin O'Malley, yep. who's made some very like you said about Obama, heartfelt statements about marriage equality. And he's even talked about it in these very, what I thought was pretty Catholic terms in terms of this is not just, this is, this is not just about um, gays and lesbians getting married. This is about us as a community and how we all yep. relate to one yep. another. Yep, the social justice appeal, you know, right? right? Whoa. <laughs> yep. um, and so there's been that, and there's been a huge uh, uh, outpouring by uh African American faith leaders in support mm -hmm. of it, even though you know it's true, there's plenty opposed, and and the Maryland Marriage Alliance has definitely made use of the African American uh, pastors who are opposed mm -hmm. to it. But it seems to me, it feels to me that the the faith uh, or the you know religious leader voices in favor of same sex marriage um, are pretty loud and. There's a lot of churches and synagogues who are involved in phone banking and, and so forth. And, you know, so and the Marylanders for Marriage Equality had this great video up on their website uh, that featured a couple um, that were Catholic, you know, probably, I don't know, I'm guessing in their 60s maybe, um, had grown children. Yes, yes, I've seen this. And, Sarah, it's a spectacular yeah. campaign. I'm not, I, I, I don't know how it's going to turn out. They've done a spectacular mm -hmm. job. The conventional wisdom mm -hmm. among the uh, LGBT watchers, you know, back channel discussions, is that we're going to win two out of three and maybe three. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really hope you win. I really, really, like to the bottom of my heart, hope you win. 
and they've, they've run a great campaign. But if you don't, it'll continue. And you'll win in right. two or three years. Well, the other, the other piece of it that I think is new also, and I think, you know, apart from this video, you and I have talked about this, um, and that is the support of uh, Baltimore Ravens linebacker. That's Brendan pretty great. Iambidale. Okay. So, that has been yes. pretty great, right? It's totally great. He's adorable. I want to adopt him. Yeah. Absolutely. I know. I saw the, I saw the video of him, and I was like, oh, my God. We can adopt him, honey, if he needs another grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> or mother, or whatever. Uh, you know, and, and the, the really, and I think that I, I tweeted this video at no, you. you did. Not it was only great. Has he Thank been, you. has he been just generally himself outspoken about it and doing fundraisers, like he did a Monday night football fundraiser with Governor O'Malley, mm -hmm. um, where, you know, they met in a bar in Baltimore and, you know, the, yeah. The Monday night football game was on and, you know, people came and played, he and go the governor played foosball and that became sort of the iconic image of that evening. Um, but the NFL itself, I, know, that's really this, cool. I think, web-based really cool. show, yeah. um, I think it's only web-based. It's called NFL Season Biography. Yeah. And I guess each week or something, I, 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 I don't even follow football. Like, I, I, know, I, 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 I didn't even know. I don't even know what the linebacker does. <laughs> So when I say so confidently you know, you that he's a linebacker, linebacker for the Baltimore good. Ravens, I have no idea what I'm saying. But anyway, I'm a bad listener. Um, I won't even stay in the room when football's <laughs> out. You know, they have, so, um, they have football parties. I'm like, bye, baby. I'm going to the museum. So I, I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in any case, um, but yes, he was very cute. It's adorable. So, but, so they, I, I'm not saying you're going to the lose. NFL. So, I'm not the person to convince. No, I know, but I just thought that this was kind of an amazing, it's totally amazing change, and I wonder, you know, I I don't know if it's measurable how much of an impact that, say, a foot an NFL player versus a pastor has on influencing somebody's opinion. Well, I think, I think I the thing like that his... they find is that it's person-to-person -person conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, they have to have the campaign to fight back the other campaign, you know, to make some public noise, um, to say, it, if you're with us, it's okay. You have plenty of other people who are with you. But the actual mind-changing happens person-to-person. Almost always. Not always. Not always. President Obama's announcement definitely uh, flipped opinion. But I would tend to think that it flipped opinion because those people had already had those conversations with someone in their family or some or someone at work or someone on their street. Right. They just needed another. They needed some a major black figure to say, it's okay. We do feel this way. Mm -hmm. Your, your anti-gay pastor isn't the only... Uh, figure you've got standing up in front of you. So all, all of those things matter. They make it okay to be on the side of marriage equality. We'll see if it's dispositive. I, I mm -hmm. really hope it is. I, I'm just telling you what the history is. Right. You know, and the other, the other factor... And then I at guess... some point we can move on to Washington? Yeah. Okay. One more thing to say about Maryland and then we'll go to oh. Washington. So the the religious demographics of Maryland are not very much like very many other states. Okay. Like you said, there's a larger um, African American population. But there's also a smaller uh, Catholic population than there is in, on average mm -hmm. in other states, and there's a smaller white evangelical population mm -hmm. on average than there is in other states. Right. So it's in that sense, when you're just looking at the numbers and who the different religious uh, demographics mm -hmm. are, it is um, it is not it's it's an atypical state in that. Well, every state is atypical. I mean, there's no average state, right? It averages out all our different atypias. Yeah, but there are states that have sort of an average number of Catholics and Evangelicals compared to the national okay. average, and so um, and Maryland isn't one of them. <laughs> Um, like a state like Ohio or Pennsylvania is more like that. Right. So, um, anyway, so we'll we'll see what happens. It's two more two weeks from today. Um, Absolutely. If you have any time to volunteer, go do it. So yeah, I, I mean, mean I think you and that, I can't because we're journalists, but right, yeah. right. Um, but I, I actually think this is sort of interesting. I mean, I live in a very uh, liberal pocket of Montgomery County, and. Um, you know, it's not getting talked about very much. Um, I'm not at all surprised. And and that's part of what's a bit, against us, right? Is, yeah. I mean, you're talking about all the public attention that it has gotten, but 
most people aren't thinking about it. Just by far, most right. people aren't thinking or right. talking about it. In in your liberal pocket of Montgomery County, I assume that people think, of course, we're all going to vote for it. What they're focused mm -hmm. on is Obama, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that I think that it's more that it's not that they're not focused on it being on the ballot. I think that I think for some people they can't. It's hard to imagine that it would fail. Yes. Um, just because of the people that they right, know. Right. Exactly. They, they have their uh, own kind of little reference group. And, yeah, they assume. It's yeah, and that's and kind of their of reference course. point. And I think that they think of our of our state as being a liberal place, and it is compared to Virginia by and large. Yeah. You know, it is, but. Um, yeah. And th there are other things that are on the ballot, uh, too. We haven't, we have a bunch of referendum questions. I mean, obviously this is question six, so there are at least six. The one that has actually gotten far more attention in terms of advertising time and, and discussion is, uh, a casino gambling question, mm -hmm. uh, which has kind of, in my mind, gotten in the way in a sense, because it's got, because it has gotten so much attention and is very controversial. Um, so, you know, but what are you going to do? I mean, that's just the democratic process. There's different things on the ballot. Um, so let's talk about Washington. Yes. So tell us, <laughs> so uh, was the um, process a, a, a similar process in terms of was, a, was something passed by the state legislature? Yes, and now the, um, the this is a more uh, intermediate one. I think, uh, I don't just think, but... Uh, you know, there is one more thing I'm going to say about Maryland, and that's that it hasn't raised enough money. Unlike uh, Maine and Washington. Um, okay, well, explain that to people, because I think that, you know, so uh, a couple weeks ago was their uh, yeah, big political group's filing deadline for their campaign finance disclosures. And the Marylanders for Marriage Equality, which is obviously the pro-equality pro group, had raised $3.2 million right. and I dollars think that or something. The, oh, like their that. target budget was $8 million, I mean, in order to have enough ads oh. and paid campaign okay. people, whereas right. but, uh, but then, the other campaigns are hitting their targets. Okay, so, HRC has so been running they the raised, campaign and hasn't put the focus on the money raising that the other states have. So, so they raised $3.2 million, but the um, uh, Maryland Marriage Alliance, which is opposed to question six, raised under a million. And so I think that to a lot of people, if you if you don't know that sort of insidery stuff that you right. know about how much money it takes, I think for a lot of people, they would look at that and say, they raised more than three times as much money as the other but side. The burden, so the when is the, that not good it, enough? In same-sex marriage, the burden is on the side that wants change. We, we, have, a, we have the bigger burden. And so if they had raised closer to $8 million... I, I, I don't know if $5 million dollars is what's going to make the difference or not make the difference. They've mm -hmm. run a wonderful campaign with what they've got. We'll see. But that would have just been uh, spent on more television. Some television and some um, paid local organizing. You know, the uh, IDing voters, uh, getting to the, them to the polls, having more of those person-to-person -person conversations, working with the friendly mm -hmm. churches you know, all the things that, that you're doing. Yeah. I mean, TV ads are important, but they're not the, the only or most important thing. Right. And we've been blitzed with political ads this cycle because we get the Virginia market ads for the presidential campaign. So I, I wonder if ads are just kind of like, ah, we're done. Okay. So <laughs> to move on to Washington ads, But anyway. Uh, um, <laughs> And just to, just to reemphasize that Maryland gets a disproportionate amount of attention because it's close to so many journalists. Because I live there. Well, and because you live there. Uh, but, but generally, Sorry. I hear more about that one than the others. Whereas um, from, from the mainstream media. But LGBT focus has been um, more on all four states that are on the ballot this time. Uh, and You're including Minnesota. Including Minnesota. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a four states fund or something like that, and um, and yeah, so we're focused on we're going to win Maine, which you know everyone's going to run around pouring champagne on their heads. I mean, we've never won at the ballot before. Uh, although that doesn't mean if anyone's watching that you should take Maine for granted. I mean, we're going to win Maine if 
they continue as they've been continuing, and all the volunteers keep turning out as if their lives are at stake, which they are. Um, and they're still waiting to see if NAM or the Catholic Church are going to come drop a huge amount of money on them the way they did last time, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. They, they may actually have been written off. Um, it's, it's so you think that the uh, anti-equality camp has written off? I don't they, know. They you know, I, I haven't they? called them and asked them. But uh, I was told, and I, I, I can't source this, this was way off the record, but that um, the Catholic Church is having some financial trouble and their archbishop, I, I'm not a religion reporter the way you do, so I, I don't remember this exactly, but the archbishop has been assigned somewhere else and is focused on that other state now. And in any case, they have not uh, become the big player on this that they were last time. Right. Um, okay, so let's 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 move back, back to Washington. To Washington. Let's, let us give the West Coast their due. <clears throat> so, what's happening there? There. Um, so, is so this the first time it's been on the ballot in Washington? State? This this one is more like Maryland in that um, it uh, the legislature passed and the governor signed a marriage equality bill, and opponents immediately put it on the ballot. They say they were ready for that, that they knew that that was what was going to happen, and that uh, the marriage equality forces say, told me this, and that while they haven't had the campaign that Maine has had, specifically focused on marriage, they did pass a domestic partnership bill and uphold it at the ballot several years ago, so that that process of education has been the preliminary process of education. They also have an unbelievably like slam dunk business lobby, right? Every, every important employer, well, maybe not Boeing, but a lot of important employers in the state of Washington have come out for it, uh, who haven't weighed in on anything else. REI, Nordstrom, Amazon, Bezos dropped in some absurd amount of money. I, I think it was in the millions. I think he put in 2.5 million. I'm not, I, I would have to check my notes, but it just made my mind go, Whoa, who has enough money to drop that? But they've, they've gotten support from Bloomberg. I mean, so has Marilyn. Mm -hmm. They've, so they essentially had the campaign. They're a referendum state and they've had to fight back bad um, referenda in the past, not as much as Oregon, but we do have to talk about Oregon before we get off. Um, but they say they are more ready to go to the ballot. Their polling is in between. They're at about 54%. I haven't actually seen their um, internal numbers or uh, gotten the exact numbers uh, from before the campaign started, but they think they're, they think they're going to win, but they could still lose. I mean, 54% isn't a sure isn't as sure as they've, what they've got. And what were the undecided percentages there? Um, where, oh, I forget what, let's see, what have we got? 54% support. Uh, yeah, I don't have that. I don't have that in front of me. I'm sorry. That's okay. I was just curious. Oh, wait, um, it said uh, 54 to 38. So. Oh, that, well, that seems rather a uh, 54. No, that's that's 54 yeah. to 46. And remember, oh, we lose two to four percent, two to five percent. Oh, so there aren't any undecideds there. There's a lot of undecideds. Well, I was adding 54 and 46 together to get 100. 54 to 38. Okay. <laughs> right. So yeah. In reality, it's 54 to 46, and oh, I gotcha. Okay. You you lose two to five percent on voting day, but they're they're feeling good about it. They said that the demographics there are, they are a very secular state. Um, most, by far, the vast majority of the population lives in Kings County, which is Seattle and environs. Uh, the <laughs> eastern part of the state is more like Idaho, but it's not very populated. Um, so they're feeling, they're, they're feeling pretty, uh, you know, not certain, but strong. So... I'm glad you brought up the a huge segment of the state being secular, um, yes. because I was at a discussion yesterday of a, a new poll that's out by the Public Religion Research Institute on the increase in the number of unaffiliated, religious yes. and unaffiliated Americans, which kind of mirrors a recent Pew poll 
which found a rise in the number of um, unaffiliated Americans and the, the loss, net loss, of adherence to Roman Catholicism and mainland Protestantism. And, um, you know, obviously there's also been a lot of discussion of who the unaffiliateds are. So they're sometimes referred to as the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, mm -hmm. uh, because they're not just one monolithic group. They include atheists, agnostics, mm -hmm. and then people who say that they're religious, but not... Spiritual, but not um, religious. Spiritual, not religious, but also people who say they're religious, but not a don't affiliate with any particular mm -hmm. organized religion. Um, yet, I think that in both both polls showed that the uh, as you get younger, the segment of the unaffiliated who do identify as atheist or secular or agnostic gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So not only do you have a bigger segment of unaffiliated as you go down in age, but you have a larger segment of the unaffiliated being atheists. Okay. And, of course, atheists are a group that overwhelmingly favors same-sex marriage. And then if you lump together all religious demographics in the 18 to 25 or 18 to 29-year-olds, they're in favor of same-sex marriage. So, like, obviously, like, over time, we're sort of going to get to the point where the people who are against it or the, the majorities of people who are against it are going to... Shuffle off the historical yeah. stage. <laughs> Exit stage left. So, you know, at, at what point do you think that the demographics are just going to be such that this is a no-brainer and, and we're done? 10 to 15 years? I mean, it, it's better every year. It's just been an astonishingly fast change over my lifetime. You've yeah, heard me say this many you, times, but Sarah, I know. it's... But if someone had asked you 10 years inconceivable ago... Inconceivable right, how fast opinion If we moved. would be where we are now... You wouldn't have, you would, if someone had 10 years ago given you a little, you know, time. Oh, no, 10 years ago, I would have believed this. No, but you it's more like, this. Okay. I mean, I'm an old lady, right? It's more like when I came out uh, in the 1970s, late 1970s, let me point out. That was a long time ago. late 1970s. It, it was so beyond possibility. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I was just, uh, I mean, so you never thought it would happen in your life? It, it, it never occurred to me to want it. Same-sex marriage. Until the 90s. And that's what I mean, beyond inconceivable. I mean, there were a few people who said they wanted it, but it, it just, it was, it was not possible to think it. You know, I, in mm -hmm. the 80s, you still went to... When you when you left the bar, you still had somebody walk out with you and look around, lest someone be waiting to beat up the queers. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I mean, that still. I mean, unfortunately, not not to the. I I can't express to you the degree to which it's different. Right. I, I just can't. But we haven't vanquished that. Is uh, it's not vanquished, but it's not. The police generally are on your side now. Right. You know. I mean. Let me tell a little tiny story about Maine. In, in um, the 1980s, there were a couple of... Um, uh, this is almost painful to talk about, really. There were a couple of uh, situations that happened um, in the United States that absolutely broke uh, lesbian and gay hearts across the country. Um, one was in Wisconsin. Was it Wisconsin or Minnesota? I'm pretty sure it was Wisconsin. Um, Karen Thompson and Sharon Kowalski, a pair of gym teachers, of all things. Uh, one of them was in a car accident, and uh, they'd been together 10 years, and the Sharon Kowalski's family would not let um, Karen Thompson see Sharon for years. They locked her up in a nursing home, and Karen fought for years to get access to right, her I care and help her bring her home. That was, uh, you know, the cause, one of the costs of love. Uh, the other was uh, Charlie Howard, a man in Bangor, Maine, was uh, thrown over a bridge by three high school kids. Uh, he died, and thrown off a, a bridge into the water. He had asthma and he died. It was shallow, but still fatal. And uh, the town rallied around the kids. Um, they did uh, go to juvie. Uh, they were out in a couple of years. It, it was heartbreaking. 
And when um, I, I had a book by one of those kids called Penitence, uh, he he turned his life around, and part of his, you know, making amends, which you can't really, but w whatever, getting right with the world or himself, uh, was writing this book with someone about essentially how sorry he was and how his mind had changed. And he went on a small speaking tour and talked to kids around me. But when I uh, started dating my now wife, um, she saw that book on my shelf and turned white. I mean, she's a white person, but I'm not, you know, that was like gray white. It turns out she had sat behind the ringleader of the killers in high school. She was out in high school and that kid sat right in front of her in history class. So uh, that's deeply scarring. Mm -hmm. Just to a degree I can't tell you. To know that the town that you live in is cheering a queer killed. I think Maine has come so far. I think when they vote finally to allow their daughters and friends and neighbors to marry, I, I think it can. I think it could really change a lot of people, like my wife. I don't want to use the word heal; it's too corny. But right, right. I think it'll make a huge. That'll be the amends. Sorry, I don't know why I went off on that. No, I'm glad you did. But I also think that that's a kind of a good place to close out. Terrific. Lovely talking with you. with you as always. Your, Sarah. your knowledge about this issue and its history is invaluable. Oh, it, it's, I, I cannot, I mean, I say this all the time, but I can't get over it that anybody else cares now. It's, that's how far we've come. <laughs> You're talking to me about it. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. Well, maybe we'll reconnoiter in a couple of weeks and do a post-mortem. Let's do. Thanks, okay. Sarah. Thanks, EJ. Bye. Bye.